Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. I am super hyper right now, and I have no idea why. I am Twisty. Welcome back to the Treehouse. Today, I'm going to go through a little bit of coverage on, um, what do you call it? That game that I play all the time that people don't know. Oh, yeah, Kerbal Space Program. Ba ba bam. I am not Scott Manley. I have no affiliation to Scott Manley. I subscribe to Scott Manley, and I recommend checking out Scott Manley's videos. But, alas, I am not Scott Manley. But I do notice when I play that a lot of people don't actually know how to use Mech Gem. Right? There's tons of tutorials and things out there on how to, you know, use Mech Gem. But people don't seem to know how to, like, use it. So what we're going to do is, get to that, resume save. I'm just going to go into my uh, Twitch stream save here. That's Space Race. I have a... Uh, competitive file against a buddy of mine. Okay, so what do we have here? Plane transfer VAB, okay. So we're gonna do a quick a quick mission. Missionioni. Missionion. I'm gonna start with the mech jet. Bam. Done. It's got RCS, it's got fuel, it's got whatever. We're gonna do a RCS fuel tank. Um let's go with one of the is it too tiny? Ah that's a good size. And we will put a couple RCS around it for yeah. Mechtip does have RCS, but it's good to have your own. And then we'll go to engines and we will where's the puff? Where's the model puff? Puff puff puff. Puff puff pass on that model bro. Okay. So bam. Alright, now we have to launch this puppy up into space. So we will go structural. Get, what are we gonna get? We're gonna get a stack decoupler. Bam. Oh yeah. Alright, and then we're gonna add a fuel section. Liquid fuel. And we'll do a liquid fuel with a nuclear. And then this is gonna need a bunch ton, which is like six menstruating ass tons, I think. I don't know the exact conversion. You'll have to just ask a scientist. I'm pretty sure a butt ton is a metric sex ton. Or six ton? I can't remember. Just, we'll go with an ass ton, because ass ton is a standard measurement. So, we're going to put an ass ton of electricity on here, and a way to generate that electricity, which is the radio isotope thingy which here. And we're going to change them so that they're in line. We're going to put two, say, three rows. Yeah, that's good. Alright, so that's our, our main modular, module, capsular, capsularly earlier. Like I said, I am totally jacked. I finished coffee, like, a little while ago, and I downed it, so I am supreme jack leader of Jackville. Population meat. That's the big ass tank. Is there a, is there a adapter that holds fuel that goes from big, yeah, I don't like the Mark III. No, that's the tiny one. It's the teeny tiny one. Yeah, super jacked. Uh, I know, I know I said I was just going to show you how to use mech jet, but you got to build something, right? You can't just throw this up. In, I guess you can throw it up in the air, but it's not going to go anywhere. Alright, transfer stage. So we got a bit of fuel in there. And then. And then. No, and then. Um, we need one more. Oh yeah, we need a detachable solid booster stage. And we are just going to kick this thing right up into space. So, we're going to go with engines. Kickbacks take way too long to burn, in my opinion. So we're going to go with some thumpers. Let's throw a couple of thumpers on there. Bam. Alright. So, staging. I'll throw this twin bore on the same stage. And then we'll do a couple. And then turn on nuclear. We'll go through our liquid fuel. That'll take us a while. And we're going to need. I think that's it. That should be all we need. I think we got our RCS up there. We got our launch stage. We got our mid stage. We got our atmosphere stage. Actually, you know what? I like doing this. Some people don't do this. And I guess, you know, it's up to you. But I'm going to go structural. I wish there were smaller. Um, separators, like radial separators, because this is going to kind of get in the way of what I want to do. Kind of. Let's get one of the batteries. 
Hold on a second. Redesign. Circularized stage. And if you're like, well, this is the most circularized stage. Don't ask me, I just know what it's called. Okay, so some nose cones. And another set of nose cones. BAM! We got ourselves a fancy looking rocket. And of course, we need to strut everything because struts are key. It's because I've never actually featured anything by KSP. I do a lot of clip management, and I'm, like, gathering a lot of clips to do something for KSP, but I haven't actually done anything on the channel yet. KSP-esque. SPSK. Yeah, that's going to be my transfer stage. Or my stream the rest of it. Okay. So, bam. We're going to go with uh, mech jab features. Because I'm just And save. Alright. Let's launch this sucker. Uh, clear the launch pad for seat. Loading, 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 loading things. Loading. Alright, here we go. So, you're going to see here on my right, I have my custom info window. This is basically everything I feel that I need to know when I play KSP. Vessel mass, important. Dry mass is your weight without fuel. RCS delta V, that's how much delta V you have based on just the amount of RCS fuel you have. That's your total delta V in a vacuum, total delta V, liquid fuel and oxidizer mass. So your, you know, fuel mass. But I'm also carrying monoprop and solid fuel, so this is just my liquid fuel. Apoapsis is not important right now. Inclination not important right now. Periapsis is not important right now. Part count, kind of important. My computer can handle up to about 500 parts. Altitude true. This is one of the most important pieces. Because if... Oh, I can't even go into cockpit right now because I don't have a cockpit. But this is your... If you go inside your cockpit, you press C to go inside your cockpit kit and you take a look, you have an altitude meter there. An altimeter. And that is your radar altimeter from the ground. That is different from your ASL radar, your above sea level altitude, because it is off by however many feet above, alt, uh, above sea level you are. So when you're trying to land, which MechJeb has its own version of, I'll get to that in a minute, but when you're trying to land, you want to know your true altitude, because that's, that's actually, because this will show you 3,000, and you're going to be at, you know, a hundred here and you're gonna smack I do a lot of night landing you'll see I never put any lights on it I think night landing is more difficult and it's more fun to do stage Delta V local gravity local gravity you'll see my atmospheric drag here um, local gravity your your gravity affecting your ship increases as your atmospheric drag goes up so basically you get heavier that's your thrust to weight ratios and all that Scott Manley could describe it a thousand times better than I can I just visually that's what I use okay so, barring all that, I have my maneuver planner, I have my ascent guidance, and you'll see right here it says select a target for a timed launch. So, I am just going to take this to the moon, for now. For now, we're going to take this to the moon. I know it's a huge ship to take to the moon, but it's... Set as target, the moon. Target, moon. Perfect. Alright, so, you'll see here I have launched to rendezvous and launched into plane of target. So, I am going to launch to rendezvous. 
So that's going to find the path if I take off from here, engage autopilot, if I take off from here and I follow my exact path, my, um, well, where is edit ascent path? If I take off from here and I follow this exact path, once I get to here, I will be on a rendezvous with the moon. Make sense? Makes sense. So, it is time warping right now to my rendezvous point. You can get Kerbal Alarm Clock too, and Kerbal Alarm Clock will show you all of your different rendezvous. I don't have it. I don't use it. I just I just know of it. This is your your mech jet window, all right? So you have. Well, we'll just wait for this to count down anyway. Your rover autopilot settings. Rover autopilot. You can set waypoints, and so I'm going to do basically a whole feature on the different settings of mech jet. So right now, what we're doing is the ascent guidance. I know how to play Kerbal Space Program completely automated. 100% you don't have to touch anything. Well, you do, but you're not actually flying the plane, is basically what I'm trying to say here. Now, I don't know if this is totally staged properly. It might blow up on contact. I don't know. We'll find out, which is a huge part of playing Kerbal Space Program. It might blow up. We'll find out. So right now it's awaiting me to lift off. So this is probably the only time I'll actually have to enter a key. Now, because we're using ascent guidance, it is going to coast to the edge of atmosphere. So once we get to the edge of atmosphere, we're going to be at you know nil drag, which will be the best time to start making maneuvers and stuff like that. We have a little bit of our twin bore left, so we're going to use that to help us circularize. I was going to save this for my circularize, but the vessel is so light, I might actually just use it to um, transfer, transfer burn, I guess. Okay, so we're at 70,000, coasting to circularization burn. Coasting to circularization burn. We're gonna burn, burn, burn like an eternal sun.
but talk a lot of tunnel dungeons. This will give me a little bit more Delta V, so we're not going to spend eight half minutes. disengaged. This is just going to free float. I will also go quick demonstration of how to use Smart ASS. So heading. This is your heading. You'll see 90, 135, whatever, right? This heading HDG is your around the nav ball guidance. Pitch is your up and down nav ball guidance. So if I want to get back to this point here, this is my 90. This is my horizon at zero. You'll see 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, so my heading zero, and my or my heading ninety, my pitch zero is right here. So pitch zero, bam, right? And roll, uh, it's off by default. You can click roll zero, and this does just straight you straighten you out. But anyways, that's quick smart ASS. But this does use battery power, so you know, be smart about it. Anyways, home and transfer to target. So we're gonna go to over orbital map, and right now we're coasting along. We should have a rendezvous with the moon. So we're going to hit create, create node. So, once we get to right here, we will have our encounter with the moon. Ta -da. And then, we can click execute next node. And then this will take you down here up for you, and then it'll warp to your node. Isn't it nifty? And then after we've warped to our node, it'll slow down. I have a bunch of junk in space. Plane transfer, SS2 ring, SS2 ring. If you watch my stream, which I highly doubt people do, but... If you ever watch my stream, I do stream KSP of me just building. Just going through, building random stuff, and this is the result of it. Just random crap out in space. So, we're burning right now. Just because it's a long run. And I'm using a nuclear engine, so that's the deal.
I am a child of 86, 1986, so the 90s are, you know, pretty important to me. I spent a lot of time, and right now I'm thinking of salt and pepper, and say the TLC, just for some reason, I don't, I don't think that's the actual song, but I think it's... Never gonna make it, never make it. I don't know what the song is. It's in my head right now, though. So, yeah. If I'm gonna suffer, we're all gonna suffer. Hey. These long burns, though, man. Them long burns. Okay, so there goes our stage. So, we're gonna separate the stack. Turn them on a prop back. Mech jibs supply to go the rest of the way, which is going to take a very, very long time because <laughs> this has what a thousand of its own mech jet propellant. Yeah, but you know. Just let it run. Let it do its thing. It's got a minute and a half left on the burn. We should be getting close, though. Yep. Yeah, it's just slowly going. So we'll let that burn, and that's how you get an encounter with the moon. Ta-da! Using Mech Jeb, totally automated maneuver planner. Now, for my next trick, let's say I had the Delta V to go to, say, Jewel, right? Well, it doesn't really like, but we'll do it anyway. We'll just do it anyway. I'll just do a quick feature. So, advanced transfer to another planet. Bam. Nope. Bam. So, we're going to select Jewel. Set as target. And it's going to calculate lowest delta V. Right here. Lowest delta V. So that maneuver is in 195 days. If you were to create a node, it would create a node for you that would take you there. But, as you can see, we're slowly getting to where we decided to be. And that was all using MechJev. So, um, change apoapsis, periapsis, circularize. Once we get to our encounter, Come on, you can do it. You can do it, you can do it, you can do it. You can do it, you can do it, you can do it. it. Alright, so I'm gonna stop it right there. As you click the check mark and it'll abort the node execution. So now that we have an encounter with the moon, we're going to go fine tune closest approach to target. And the moon's got a pretty low whatever, right? So I'm gonna say ten thousand. Ten thousand meters. I wanna circ I wanna fine tune sorry fine-tune a closest approach to target of 10 kilometers. Create node. Oh, sorry. Right, because I was looking at um, Jewel. That is target. Okay. Create node. Thank you. So at this point, it's going to do an 8.4 meters per second burn to give me a 10 kilometer fine closest approach to wherever. So now, if this is another little thing. If you have a hard time seeing what your maneuver node is doing, you can click on Moon, Focus View, and when you zoom in, it will show you how close you're getting to it, you know, once you... So, I did find tune closest approach, and for some reason it wants to put me through the Moon. So I'm going to click this, which is my maneuver node editor and planner, and I can drag it there, or I can drag it here. Let's drag it right there, because we want to get to periapsis. And then, we're going to create a new... Do we have a periapsis right now? We should have a periapsis right now. No, we have an apoapsis right now. Yes, that's our next period. So, alright. Assuming this works, and it should, but assuming this works, create a new maneuver node to circularize at the next periapsis. Create node. No, it didn't do it. Alright, yeah, I'm gonna have to wait until. Just. It's gonna have to wait. 
get. Or actually, yes, yeah, sorry. So I can create a node here, add a maneuver, and then change the last maneuver node to circularize. Thanks for the right? Does this work? Yes, okay. So did you catch that? I basically created a node here. I fine-tuned my closest approach, which got me to, you know, my proper encounter with the moon. It actually had me putting through it. So I hit my maneuver node and adjusted it to bring me out to roughly where I wanted it to be. And then I created a maneuver node at my periapsis, and then I switched from create a new to change the last, and I clicked here. When I clicked here to add a maneuver, this became my last maneuver. So then I clicked on circularize the next periapsis, and clicked create node, and that gave me my circularization node. Ta-da! And then, now that we have everything here, remember, I still have not touched the WASD keys at all. Not even once. Not to adjust, not to move, nothing. This is all being done automated with MechJet. So, execute next node. It's going to maneuver me over to the node. It's going to time warp me to my node. This is really a very small adjustment because our rendezvous took us actually to 500 kilometers and we need to get down to 10 so it's at this point we only need to adjust 8 meters per second to change you know, 500,000 meters I'm sure somebody could explain the math better than I I just I don't know how to explain it so I know makes sense makes sense to me precise node that comes up in a, you know, a precise amount of time, and you, you have to burn at that node, or your delta V markers are screwed, turn off your RCS, because a 0.1 meters per second change, even SAS can do it too, at this point, when you're traveling, what, 113 million kilometers to ELU? A one meter per second change can send you completely off. So turn off your RCS unless you absolutely need it to maneuver. This thing has onboard SAS, so it's actually pretty torquey, as you could call it. But, so, our maneuver node's a little bit off, but it'll take that into account. So, that, that's the guy I'm playing with, Grasshopper. So, we will, uh, what's going on here? Why is it being weird? Board order execution. Execute next node. There we go. So it was stuck on the other node. <laughs> and here's our approach. It's going to slow us down so we don't shoot over our node. Bam, 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 bam. Still haven't pressed WASD. I had to press R. Well, you can just click it, I think. No, you actually have to press it. Or maybe you can click it. No, you have to press it. R for RCS. So 284 meters per second burn to circularize, which, you know, whatevs. There we go. I was supposed to turn my RCS back on because it's actually using RCS too. Let's run for a minute, or two, or ten, five hundred. No, it's two minute burn. It'll, it'll go quickly. Hey, what's going on here? 
Something weird's happening. What's going on? Uh, oh, I think we're out of power. We're probably out of power. Well, we have some charge. What's going on? I don't know what just happened, ladies and gentlemen. Stand by. Technical difficulties. Houston, we have a problem. Off. Sometimes the MechJeb SAS. Yeah. Sometimes the MechJeb Mech SAS doesn't work very well. Where you want to use. So execute next node. Smart ASS, it's good, but it throws it off. Maneuver node. So, unfortunately, I'm going to have to do this semi-manually. So I had to press shift to up my throttle. As Smart ASS, it tries to correct, and it keeps overcorrecting and overcorrecting and overcorrecting. So, yeah. whoa! All right. Well, I guess I'm gonna show you guys how to land. What's going on here? Okay, so we're going to turn off Ascent Guidance, this is, we're going to remove all nodes. We're coming in kind of hot, so we're going to go, bam, Landing Guidance. Land somewhere. This is your panic button. This is your button you hit when you need to land. I have a feeling that the extra weight of the monoprop down here is throwing it off. I can't be too sure though. May have just screwed my entire recording. But, I mean, I got you the basics of it. I got you figuring out what's going on. Off. But, you know, these things happen. You crash, you fail, you burn, you die. That's how to use MechJab. That's the beginning of how to use MechJab to transfer and stuff like that. I just, I shouldn't have gone with the pod. I should have gone with a lander and a pilot and whatever. I also just sat down because I was super hyper and decided to make an episode, so I didn't even plan this out at all. I just built something and sent it. So, you know, with that being said, there's how to use MechJib. For better or worse, I am Twisty. Thanks for hanging out at the Treehouse, and I will see you next time. Bye bye